What's your introduction? The Pilots and Pirates? Yeah, yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. What's going on, party people, family members and friends, all our pilots and pirates, anybody that's tuning in, stopping by to say hi. Welcome back. Pilots and pirates. I always like it. It's fucking great. Oh man, so here we are, Highland Park. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. You'll see it. You'll see it in the in the FPV stuff that we'll do. Yeah. Um beautiful it's cold though weather's a changing <laughs> it's cold it is cold yeah 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 There's no you joke could, about you could that. see it in in the gear that we're rocking <laughs> <laughs> it's not light anymore it's gloves gaiters hats everything so let me ask you a question yeah what what made you select the frame that you have selected to fly and not the drp because i know that that's something that we're testing but yeah. we both fly Apex, yeah, and uh, and we both flown a lot of frames. So what is it about the Apex that you were like, hmm, this is this is what I want, you know? Ah uh, man, for for the frame selection, it took me a while to get here. You know, I went through all of them in the beginning, like about three years ago to be exact. November 2020 is when I, you know, officially got in the air, full okay. FPV, right? Mm -hmm. But in between that, I was building um, the Mark. IV. Wait, wait, sorry to interrupt you. My bad. November of so you just had an anniversary yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. My third oh, year. Shit. My third year. Nice, yeah. man. Officially Congrats, full. bro. Thanks, That's man. fucking awesome. Man. So yeah. October was when I was like actually sending it in um in Florida. Okay. You know, full FPV. But to record something, uh -huh. and to, to post something up, I think there was my, my first full year happened in November 2020. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Wow, so three years. Nice. I went through them all, man. I've tried Canadian frames. I've tried um, local frames. I've tried the, uh, the Source One. I've tried them all. Um, but I landed at the Apex because that was it was like a staple for most of the premium pilots to go to. And until I tried it myself, that's when I, I knew that that's the frame that I wanted because it was um, exactly what I needed. It was uh, it's light, you know. Um, it was thick. The carbon was was proper. The way it flight characteristics super important to me. Um, well, now for all of us it should be. But man, that's that's why I chose the the Apex. You know, I, I've I've flown them all until I've reached. Um, Mr. Steele's Apex, and um, yeah, I haven't changed until uh, now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the DRP. Pretty much same thing for me. Like uh, I, I flew a few. I could name them. Like I've, I've flown uh, a, a couple of Jet RCs. Yes. Yeah, the Mark II. Uh, Mark IV. Mark IV. Okay. Uh, and then some randoms that just like popped up here and there. But I landed on the Alien pretty quickly. Uh, within like the first three months, the Impulse uh, RC Alien. And not the alien, the Martian, because I was getting them in China. And right. <laughs> funny story, and I think I've told you this before. Right. At one point, Carlos, he was he was the reason we swapped to the alien, because that was his frame. And it just made sense for all of us to have the same frame, because we could just interchange parts. So, they, you know, we both had, all three of us had arms and standoffs and right. screws. So it was, it just made sense. And uh, I, I gave him once a Martian, and at one point we couldn't get the alien, and he built the Martian. And he liked the Martian more than the Impulse alien crazy that's wild but then it was i flew that frame for like two years uh and when the apex came out it only made sense because that was like you mr Steele's frame from the alien to the apex carlos never switched but me and gino switched and uh pff, same thing as you bro the arms were thicker the body was stronger it felt when i was i was already i i liked how i was flying at the time of the switch right. i liked what i was doing so like i understood the quad and i could feel the difference in the handling and how like it took the turns and how it handled and shit. agreed yeah so for me it was like a no-brainer and, yeah. and i've never used another frame until the drp frames that we've been testing and they're pretty good as a matter of fact i dare say the drp frame now is better than the apex you know what and that's uh that's a huge deal man for us to be able to say that a prototype that we've been playing with for the past couple of months actually for over a, a year now because this is part two this is the second version of this right yes because you you've yes. been playing with one uh previous yeah well well this is v3 of total drps right because i think okay. mark had uh two previous mm -hmm. uh which were based out of the alien and then he cut them and made them like the apex but it was still the alien frame See, and go. now we're still now on the apex alien frame but we're doing it a little bit different more see manny and i are not weight concerned we're more about mm -hmm. preservation of money <laughs> so i'll take 10 15 20 extra grams of carbon 
to break an arm less or to break a bottom plate less, you know, because that's what happens on the apex. The bottom plates. Right. Everybody, every one of us that rocked the apex yeah. knows that that back, um, the Cadex plate or the um, the VTX plate always breaks, man, if you bottom out or on a bad slam or something like that, mm -hmm. man. And that's why we beefed it up a little bit. Exactly. And and no shade at Impulse RC because Not at all. they respect. will forever have my respect. Respect I will. I still, my, my, if I have to go to a job right now I mean, to do something, guess what's going? The Apex. Apex is lined up. <laughs> the Apex with FedTech Triplets. with the Blackbird Motors. That's the quad that I trust. Correct. You know, so, but at the same time, it's a $90 frame. And that's a big price tag to bash in the park. It, which is how we're segueing now into the new DRP, which is why we're exactly. playing with this prototype. Yep, exactly. Cost effective. And it flies great. It flies on oh. the line. And the, the reviews have been exactly the same from many different pilots. Not many, but a few different so, pilots that fly very different. Mm -hmm. And they all say, yo, this shit flies locked on a line. Like, it's just amazing how That's well it flies. wild for someone to say yeah. going against the big names. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it ain't about competition. No, 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 not at all. We're uh, just talking about it, it's. I'm not comfort. trying to build a better frame i'm trying to build a cheaper as good frame but just basically cheaper but be happy with it as well exactly. comfortable with what exactly. it is you're flying no vibrations it, it nothing nothing is too crazy durable and right now i think we've been testing it for how long bro since a few uh, months right yeah, since the summer yes it's the summer it's the summer it's the summer and we've broken two three arms and one or two bottom plates yeah. and we fly and he flies yeah yeah you know it just just Three arms for me. That's yeah, it. yeah. Just see, I broken one arm. I broken one arm, and I think I broke a bottom plate with a big crash. <laughs> but, yo, man, it handles. Yes, and now with does. the improvements we've done, thanks to uh, Greg, good looking Greg, um, the arms are not squared off anymore, like we spoke about. They're yeah, more they're rounded to give it more surface area to take the hit. That's right. You know, less flat. And this is coming from an engineer that designs this shit, and he thought it was a good idea. He was like, "That might disperse it," you know. So let's see. That's that's the point for this new frame. Yeah, man, pairing it up with the right set of motors too. Yeah, absolutely, Ooh, absolutely. Because absolutely. I mean, what what are your go tos? Um, listen, right now it depends what we're talking about. If yeah. I'm building a premium frame, Blackbirds see, all day. There we go. Now that's another conversation. Are yeah. you building a premium frame, exactly. a frame or a budget frame? Yeah, it's gonna depend. If you're building a budget frame, I'm still going with Axis, but I'm going with the AEs, the uh, 22, 20, 2207s, yeah. 1960s. Yeah. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm putting right. out there. You know. All right. What about you? You know, because I smash and bash a lot, I try to stay uh, budget friendly. Um, and I've been rocking T-Motor V-Locks for a while now. Okay. I do believe and trust in um, the brand itself, but I love the Axis motors. Yeah. My The AFs were my favorite. They're uh, amazing. They're my favorite. But um, because I break a lot of motors mm -hmm. a lot, well, you know, um, not as much as before, but yeah, uh, the V3s are, are really impressive, but I haven't steered away from the, the V2s uh, at the moment. But yeah, that's all I'm rocking. If it's not Axis, it's T-Motor. Yeah, yeah, exactly, same. I've tried, in that sense, I've tried every brand of motors. Oh my God. Literally, oh my. every brand Juggling of motors. Juggling through every brand. Everything, every brand of ESCs. Like, it, bro, when I was in China, it was the Chinese Amazon called Taobao. Yeah. Put That's a date to that, everything. though. Put a date to that. Um, let's see. 2018, 2019, now that was the time that I was bringing all that shit in. So they, yo. And it was just random. You said bringing all that shit in. What do you mean dude, by that? Dude, so like... My my carry on, a yeah. regular deep carry on. It was parts. I probably have the pictures. I could show you. I could probably put the pictures. They're on Instagram for sure. Yeah, covered the whole thing. Batteries, frames, components, props, motors, ESCs, like all types of shit. So cool. Yeah, I missed like that whole shit. Man. I I would I would hit up. We had you know talk to Gino and Carlos and be like, all right, this is the price for this. This is the price for this. This is the price for this. What do you guys want? Yo, bring me three of those, bro. Bring me five of those. Bring me the. I was bringing in the lipos, the GMBs. We were getting them like, any up like uh, twelve bucks a lipo, bro. Uh, something like that. It was insane, bro. Awesome. It was insane. That all sounds yeah, so dope. it was crazy. A yeah. whole fucking and it was months of this shit. All right. So what what was uh, what was the go to for you uh, in like ESC? T motor. T motor. I mean, listen. There was phases. All right. Okay? Yeah, yeah. You see, but there that was phases. To all of us. When I started, it was all over the place. It was whatever. I started. Remember, I think we were talking about the individuals because that's what was around, you know. So I learned how to solder mm -hmm. on the individual uh, oh, ESCs, which okay. was cool because, 
like there was different sizes, so you had to be. Oh, and I look at my soldering now because I still have some compared of the, to back then. Oh, it was how important is that though? Oof, soldering is it? Okay, in reality, at least in my reality, because I'm sure there's different stories out there, right? Of course, everyone has the, their own. As long as like there's a lot of solder and it's connected and there's no like lines and if it's ugly looking like on top rugged, I don't think it's a big deal. Okay, it's still gonna stay connected. But if it's like a soft joint where like there's a line going through and it's barely on, that's a problem. Okay. And the major problem for that is the fact that you could be flying and that's wire could come off. And then you're just out of the sky for something that could have been avoided, you know? It's not a branch, it's not, you know, uh, crashing into something, it's that you didn't solder the wire correctly. And that starts at step one. You have yeah, to know yeah. how to do right, that. That's the ABCs you know? at the very beginning of building. Exactly, and listen, it's very easy, okay? Soldering is not easy, but the trick, at least this is when it all changed for me, is when I got the temperature to 465 Celsius. I think it's like 950 Fahrenheit. It's in that range. It's very, very hot, but it's just a touch, that's it. Yeah. It's just boom, that's it. If you're there on it for a little square pad, that's not good. You're gonna melt that pad off. Yeah, something's gonna go wrong. That's yeah. happened to me multiple mm -hmm. times as well in the in this journey. If you're not at least up in the 400 Celsius, I don't really know what it's in Fahrenheit because all my stuff is in Celsius. I think it's like 850 to 950, something like that. Yeah. You're, it's not melting. And also the solder you use mm -hmm. itself, you yeah. know, it's a 6337. I don't know if it's tin lead or lead tin. 6040 rosin blend. Yeah, 6040 is good. Steel uses 6737. 6337. That's okay. why I went there. And honestly, it's good. Okay. I like it. It melts nice. It's like it leaves nice blobs. It's very good. All and right. then it's gonna depend on you if you want to use flux, all that. Yeah. I don't use flux. I'm a fluxer. Yeah, he's, a, a, he's flu a fluxer. I'm not a you fluxer. You know what? Shout out to that banana because I'm a fluxer because of this man, you know, his profession allowed me to um, see the the qualities of a good mm -hmm. soldering um, joint. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure, it looks beautiful. But yeah. I don't know if it has any actual like technical purpose. Let's say, like, if, does it make the solder joint stronger? I don't know. I I, I know. It, well, go ahead. I, no, I I like to say that visually from using it so much that I see that it protects uh, the circuit board. It only allows it to stay on the metal alone. This is true. This you is know, one hundred percent true. That's yeah, very effective. It, it is. It is. And not trying to brag, but it doesn't happen to me. It has. <laughs> it has. But after when I took over DRP and I was building shit like professionally. Right, right. No, of course. All DRP that went away from me man, because yeah, exactly. Yeah, like I figured out exactly. Over and over so, and over. You know when I use flux? When I'm doing XT60s, like mm -hmm. big connections. See, this is a good tip for those out there. Yeah. Uh, the, the younger pilots or the newer pilots, I should say, that I don't know how to solder these. Yeah, Go exactly. When I use uh, XT60s, because it's a thick connection, the, so the flux is definitely a very helpful tool. I'm not saying it's not. I'm not discouraging it at all. I'm just saying I don't use it. Okay. That's it. But yeah, for uh, when you have to solder battery terminals, like for example, for like the big for the center lifters right. and you have to change them from XT90s to 150s or whatever right. it may you be. It's a thick cable, yeah. so you need assistance. Right. So I dip those cables in solder paste, uh, I'm sorry, flux and, fl and, and of the paste kind. Like I have a little jar yeah. and like I dip Same. it in there. You guys. And then it oh. goes, the solder goes on very easily. If I didn't use the flux, it would take a lot more time. The wire would heat up a lot more. I don't want that, it's a fucking battery. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, I sure. want to get this shit done as quickly yeah, as possible. Right. But for the quad itself, it's so hot and it's so fast that you don't really need the flux, honestly. If you have it at that consistent temperature. Yes, exactly. And for that, my solder iron is a box that has both a, a heat gun and uh, it's, it's a hot station, it's called. Okay. So, like, I dial up digitally and it gives me, like... A good amount. Those nine ninety nine ones that you buy at home in Amazon and shit. <laughs> no, listen, they're good at first, right? Because right? right. you first. don't. Yeah, but you're never gonna get it to that temperature. It's not gonna get that hot. So you're always gonna have those issues if you don't know exactly what you're doing. Bring in the flux and shit like yeah. that. You know. Yeah, there's also a lot of pilots that also just use the um, the the pen. Also, yeah. You the know? what is it? The uh, TS one hundred or mm -hmm. whatever it is. Yeah, that's also that's that. It's very good. You don't need the station. The TS-100 gets to that temperature. It's yeah, crazy. A consistent 400, yep, always. Yep, always. always. And, it, and it's good. As long as the wire is good. Yeah. <laughs> the element is really, really good in heating. 